um, there's nothing tidy about this, but I kind of like that about it. So what I've used is I've used a six by six pad, but actually the book is five by five. But we were going on about six by six pads, which is why, which is why I've called it a six by six. Um, but I've just used um, the papers out of the pad. I used um, Cartabella Flower Market for this one. Um, but you can see that the tension's right because it looks good on both sides, which my proper one doesn't. But nothing is straight. I don't care. And I've just... There's bits that are kind of... Rustic, I think is the phrase I'm looking for. But I've just, I mean, I've sewn bits oh, on. Yeah. I've just, I've just, it's just sewn. I've just sewn bits. And and and, and I, I don't care. But anyway, there's lots of bits in this book. So there's like little pockets that we're going to make. And I've added some um, Project Lifestyle cards. And I've sewn around my photos, which I haven't even printed out for tonight. But never mind, I'll do that sometime over the next week. Um, and I've just, I've just sewn. This is a little pocket here, there on the front. This is a pocket, but I haven't put anything in it. But that's a pocket in there as well. And then I punched out bits here. That's two pieces together, sewn together to make a pocket. We've got a couple of shakers in here. Um, that's a little pocket. But there's bits of cotton everywhere and I don't care because I like that style. Little um little thing there, a little envelope there. I say nothing straight. It's all kind of all over the place. All of uh, well, there's lots of ends where I've tied my ends and just left it. But I don't care because I like it. And then there's these bits. So really the point of this class, and I reckon it's going to take us a couple of weeks, is about um using the papers that we've got to the maximum um, and just doing some sewing and just probably swearing and just having a little bit of fun. Now, if you haven't got a sewing machine or you don't like sewing, which is a sentiment that I can heartily understand, um, you can just draw it on. Just, just draw on the lines or you can always hand sew bits as well. Now, the book is actually sewn but it's made out of pieces of paper which we're going to cut in a minute which are actually five by six inches so they're folded with a an inch sort of bit that go oh, i don't know how to explain this they are mm, oh gosh they are they are from oh somebody help me out new zealand company roses studio Go onto the Roses Studio website and have a look and see what they do because they were doing free shipping. I don't know if they still are, but their prices are great. And even if it's not free shipping, it's definitely worth a look. Absolutely love their stuff. It's brilliant. Yeah, Roses Studio. Absolutely fantastic. Very, very good. Very nice designs. Very cost effective. Thoroughly recommended. So, yes, yeah, so each each page kind of interlocks, which we'll we'll look at, but we won't be looking at actually putting this book together until next week because it's actually easier to do the decorating on the pages before we actually come to to bind it together. So that's just to give you a bit of an example about what mine's like and all the little bits that we're going to do. I haven't even counted out how many pages we need. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight so what i want you to do is i want you to grab your papers and i've decided to use this one because they're nice bright colors this is a doodle bug design simply spring which i think you can still get hold of not from us um but i think you can still get hold of it in places and what we're going to do is i'm going to choose eight pages um that i'm going to use as my base pages so when I talked earlier about maximising things, there's things like this page here, which you obviously got the stripes on, which I'm going to come to use um, separately. So I don't really want to use those for my base page, but that's a nice one. So I'll use that one. Oh. I'm going to rip this, I can tell. Two. Three. 
library i'm trying to as well choose pages that don't um that aren't directional because it just it makes a lot well i suppose you could I, i'm just trying not to three four five That one's eight, six. Hang on, how many have I just done? One, two, three, four, five, six. I am going to have to use this directionally. Seven, eight. Oh, that one doesn't want to come out. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them at six by five inches, but the five inches is the height. So let me grab my trimmer, get rid of my sewing machine. So when I say about that, this is a directional paper because it's got frogs on. I don't know if you can see that, but with five being the height and six being the width, I'm going to have to cut this to make sure that my 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 this bit is eight so that my page will be the right way round. Ruth, Hi, Ruth. One. Two. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Three. my voice I heard that I was just copying this. no you weren't you said you hope to spend the rest of my life yeah that wasn't what you said you didn't let me finish yeah 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 okay right so we've got our eight pages and we're just going to do a little bit of scoring, which is a little bit odd, but it will become apparent why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. So, still haven't found my proper bone folder. And I also haven't found, I've lost three pairs of scissors. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to score. Do I? You dream of paper and books at night, you are always... No, you're usually awake during the night. Yeah, I am usually awake during the night. But actually, David, it's funny you should say that because I do dream a lot of my books. Well, if I... Three, Shelby, it helps if they're double-sided. It takes all the pressure off you having to decorate everything. So mine are double-sided. I find it helps if they are. Um, but it does much if they're not because... And I'll show you for why. Like, when I use some of my... Um, uh, uh, what do you call them these uh, project life cards which i cut down actually um but they've only just like kind of they've got squares on the back but they might just as well have been plain and and it's not the end of the world you just have to decorate put put like little bits of you know decoration on but that i i have used double-sided just because it like i said it takes all the pressure off really so we're going to score on our six inch side so we're popping the six inch bit at the top so if you remember this is six inches by five inches and i want you to score a quarter of an inch half an inch three quarters of an inch and one inch now those these are these score marks are vaguely useless except quarter half three quarters one Except when we come to put the fancy bits on, it actually 
helps us line stuff up so they're not functional one of them's functional the one inch one is functional but the rest of them aren't they're more like guidelines i suppose so i'm scoring a quarter of an inch half an inch three quarters of an inch and one inch on every single one how do you get your quarter inch half inch and three quarter inch to look like fractions because when i'm writing tutorials and stuff it never does that and it drives me nuts yeah, if you want a quarter of an inch, yeah. hold down the alt key the what now the alt key by the space bar oh yeah and then type on the keypad zero one eight eight Oh God, and I'll never remember you, that. And then that gives you a quarter. Zero oh. one eight nine gives you half and zero one nine nine gives you a I'm never gonna remember that. Yeah, just ask me. Alright. It should do it automatically, I think. It used to. Word does if you're talking in word. Oh. Right, so scoring on the six inch side, a quarter of an inch, half an inch. Three quarters of an inch and one inch and that is as difficult as it gets right so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through this book and I'm going to choose which page I'm going to use for which page so I think I'm going to use that nice spotty one on the front because I really really like it so I'm going to fold this on that one inch score line that I've made and I'm going to fold it underneath so that that flap goes underneath. OK, so that is going to be my front page. Right now I open it up. And I'm looking at this page here. And so I just need to choose what page I want to go there. So I think I'm going to choose that one. So I'm going to fold that also underneath. OK, so in theory, it won't go like this, but you get the idea that that's going to go like that. It's not quite as simple as this. I'm just doing it like this because it's easier. OK, so I'm going to open it up again and I can see this page. So I'm going to use I'm going to use my frogs. So I'm going to fold that underneath on this page. Now, the next page, this is two two pages um sewn together because that is actually a pocket in there i don't know if you can see that there is a pocket in there so i'm going to choose two pages to go together so i'm going to choose those two and i'm going to put them this is the trouble with directional i'm going to put them together like that just so i remember which way which two are going to go together if you're using single side you're going to need 16 pieces <sighs> you could you could do if you stick them together um i'm just trying to think if this is an easy way to do it right and i'm just gonna just clip those together so that i know that they're gonna go together and then i'm gonna fold both of those around that way okay right then i've got this page now i don't know if you can see but this page folds the other way so i want this flap to fold that way okay and that's going to go in there like that which means that these other pages need to fold the other way because when the book goes together it's going to go like this so that each page interlocks so that's my front page and that's my back page okay so that's going to go like that the next page these two hang on no which is my next page that one 
that's my page two goes in there and then that one goes on there so what we're doing is we're just putting them one on top of the other opposite way rounds like that okay so they interlock in opposite directions does that make sense doesn't matter at this point actually because we are um we're not going to put it together till next week but it just gives you an idea of how the book goes together all right so now we've got our pages kind of roughly how we want them what we're going to do is we're going to go through and decorate them so i'm going to start with my uh with my um i could start with the front page but let's have a look and see what i've got in here there's not huge amounts that i can fussy cut that one had lots of sort of like um really bold floral images so i'll fussy cut that i want those stripes could fussy cut a bit of that right okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start off by cutting out some of the elements that i want so let me just get my trimmer and i'm going to cut myself some stripes so this page i've actually cut three stripes so i want to cut those first so i'm going to choose three so i'm going to cut that top one um have that bottom one i think and then i'm going to do one maybe a bit thicker okay So this page, my page two, what I've done, let me just grab my page two. Actually, I'm going to use this one for my page two with the frogs on, is I've taken three of these uh, stripes and I've popped them on here and then I've sewn them. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tiny, tiny bit of glue because I don't want to end up gluing up my sewing machine but literally just a tiny bit of glue because i'm going to sew this down the middle which is why i haven't put my glue in the middle and i'm just going to pop it where i want it to go on my page and yes there is an overlap here but that's kind of deliberate Oh, morning, Anne. Okay. Right, this is the bit where I'm going to start cursing, probably, because I'm going to get my sewing machine out. And I'm just going to show you what I did. So, this might be noisy, because it's a right clunky, horrible yeah, thing. To, uh, to turn yeah, you might, you might want to turn the sound down, because this is right clunky. Oh, I wasn't saying for that. Oh. I know what you were saying for cheeky. I've got it in me today. You have. You've been very, very cheeky. Right. So I'm just going to sew <laughs> in a straight line. <laughs> Shut up. Right down the right down the middle of this thing. Oh God. Right. You ready? It's going to be noisy. stuck already there we go i knew it oh dear no but i didn't put the glue where it's going oh i know why i need to put a new bobbin in oh flipping heck yeah. <sighs> yeah, 
string. Yeah. Luckily, knowing that I couldn't make that work to put the things in, I did two bobbins earlier. Oh, now this has come undone again. Oh, I flipping out sewing machines. <sighs> Talk amongst yourselves. Cool. I knew this would happen because it's worked so well all week. It's live. I have to say, the other thing I'm not that keen on on this machine is it is a flipping. Because it's quite small, it's a beggar to thread. So when you get to a certain out. age. Thank you. I've lost I've lost the bit that holds me bobbing in as well, which doesn't really help. Ruth says she doesn't go on the sewing machine, but you don't need to use one, do you? Nope, you can just draw these bits on. Just draw them on. Right, let's try again. Take two. <sighs> Uh, I, I was now i always leave a really long thread thread because i like to tie it up is this page two with a hinge folded this is page two with the yeah the the the, the, the what sits folded underneath yeah mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. It's not even gone on straight so let's try and straighten it up a bit let's get rid of some of these threads who's done a class with me at Hobbycraft in Stafford, if, Su if Sue's here, will know what my language is like when it comes to sewing machines. Right, before I do any more on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these threads off. So I just literally just tie a couple of knots in the end and then cut them off like that. So we've just got a little bit because I, I, I just like that kind of I don't know, fuzzy bit at the end. Right, let's tie that one off. They're not bad, are they, for me? They are very straight. It is a right handed sewing machine, though, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, that's what it is. But yes, if you're sensible enough to not use a sewing machine, just draw these bits on. Let's get rid of that bit. Now at this end, you've got a choice. Oh, I've lost my little needle. I usually have a little needle. Hang on, I'm gonna have to go and grab one out of the other room. And I'll show you what um how I deal with the ends when you've only got one end. Mark, just entertain people. Did you do? 
right so when i've got an end that's only in one way i have an ordinary needle which I also can't thread and I literally just sew that thread through from the back Michelle, and then tie it at the front. Michelle, um, don't, me, so don't take the pants off now. Don't take the what? Don't take my pants off. She says entertain them. He already has taken his clothes off. Trust me. I'm here in my pants and shirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't mean, I, mean, I just want you to know I'm fully dressed. Absolutely fully dressed. Not even in pyjamas, in proper clothes. I am from the waist. Yes, dear. Right, so let's pop that through there. Tie that up. Now you might ask, I've got the needle in my mouth, which is why I sound weird. I uh, probably shouldn't have the needle in my mouth. Anyway, um, don't do, don't do what I, don't do what I do, do what I say. Don't put the needle in your mouth. So, um, why am I using black when this is nice, pretty paper? Well, the reason I'm using black, pure, purely personal choice. Um. And I just like the, uh, not, not comparison, what's the word? Uh, com, com something or other. There's a word, isn't there? The difference. Oh, I don't know. We've had a right day. Yes, we have. Including calling out the AA. Alcoholics Anonymous. It wasn't Alcoholics Anonymous, although it felt like it at one point. Right, let's just get rid of this one, which I shouldn't have cut off the other side, really. What are they all saying? Contrast. That's the word. Thank you. Contrast. I can't remember my words. It's the colour of your soul. It is the colour of my soul. Uh, I'm just going to... Tie that off Susan, and make sure. If you pull up one thread, it lifts up the stitch and you can pull through the other one. Yes. I think Wendy said something similar as well. Okay, so that's tidied that up quite a lot, but I've got my nice edges. So, where's my book? Okay, now what I did with these is I folded that back on itself like that and then I folded it back there so that my page was actually all ending at the same place I didn't have any kind of overlaps so I just folded it not for any other this is just pure decoration there is absolutely Kirsten no says, reason inhale the eventually no I've taken it out of my mouth now I do eventually but, yeah right okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew myself a border so be prepared for the noise again. Am I singing? No. But I'm going to do it twice because... Oh no, I'm, no, I'm going to do it once on this one, but quite often I'll do it twice, dependent on how completely cockeyed the first one is. There is nothing... Um, what can I say? Uh, these books are done in the way that they're done mainly because of mistakes rather than intention if that makes sense
So I'm only going as far as where that flappy bit is that we're going to um, fold. Okay, so now you see I've got my border around the outside and I've still got all my sort of, you know, thingy bits. Right, now I'm going to tie these off and tidy them up. So I've got two threads on the front and two on the back. Obviously these are my start and finish threads. So I don't need to do any sewing through. So I'm just going to snip that one off, turn it over. and snip that one off as well now is it tidy on the back well no not really but it's tidier than it would have been if i'd used my other sewing machine but i'm cool with that because um it's just adds to the charm doesn't it so there we go so that's my front page my, my page number one and on this one you can see that what i did here was i added the word memories but i, I can't find any more sort of similar stuff to that so i'll need to go and have a look right so if I look through now, I need to find where this end goes, okay? Because we're going to attach stuff to it. So if I have a look here, I can see that what I've done is I've attached it to two Project Life cards. Now, I did look earlier for a couple of Project Life cards that would fit in, because we all need to get rid of these, don't we? We've all got hundreds of the darn things. So I found some that kind of vaguely went. So let me find a couple. They are nice, aren't they? Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to use those too. So what I did here, and this is where these these lines come in. I can it just gives me an idea about keeping it straight. So all I did was I attached one to the front and one to the back. So if I pop a tiny bit of glue just to keep it straight, then find one of these. I can't remember how far it was. One in. Find one of these lines the score lines yeah, and I'm just going to line that up on that side add that there and now I'm going to sew those on Yeah. And I think just because I can, I'm going to do two lines. Neither of which will be straight or parallel. But heck. So the most time consuming bit of this is tying all the ends off. Yep. Right, are you all bored watching me do this or are you happy for me to just carry on with each page? Yeah. 
How have I got cat hairs in this one? There aren't even any cats around. Okay, carry on, I will. Just don't want to bore you all stupid. Okay. Well, I haven't started swearing, so I'm very surprised you're not bored. Lisa Carl says it beats the rubbish the other half is watching on TV. No, football. EastEnders. Oh, that. I haven't watched it for years. I don't know if that's what you've watched. I'm just saying. No. Do you find using your hand to control a pedal easier than your foot? No. But with this little hobby craft machine, um, because it's it's a very tiny pedal and it's not a very long string, I've just got used to using it with my hand. But no, the answer is no. My other one's much better because it's a proper big foot pedal. Right, so that's that page, okay? So I've got my two Project Life cards there. And that's all sewn up. Now, what was on the back of that? I think it's carry on crafting. Oh, that sounds interesting. Go on. Oh, that sounds more like what this is. This is. Right, so this page, what I've done is I've taken some of our cutter parts and I've sewn round those and I've made a little pocket. And I and you've think. Got a PL card on either side of the flap there. Yeah, I've just put a hat on this one. I've just put one on either side and just the 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 they're just together like that. The, the, I, I, for no reason whatsoever. A lot of this book is about no reason whatsoever. It's not a bad machine at all for the price. I think it's absolutely excellent to be honest with you. Um, but you just have to watch them because I understand that some of them, and I'm, my mine is on one of them. Afternoon. Hmm? It's made on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, because I do find that the um, it goes through a lot of needles. Right, so we're going to make a little pocket to go on here, and we're going to make one of these little pull apart things. So, uh, right, I've got my pull aparts. They're here. They're a bit different on this one. I might do that like that. So. I need to just cut that off. And then what I want to do is cut something for my pocket. So Can you use any special label with it or ones that came with it? Well, I did read somewhere that if you're sewing paper, you're best off using a ball-nosed needle. Um, but I and I got them ready because I thought I'd probably need them. I got these from Hobbycraft as well. These are just Hobbycraft's cheap, universal needles, um, both of which I've found have worked quite well. We do have some ball-nosed needles. I just don't know where they are. Although why they call them ball-nosed, I don't know, because they it's are still... Bending yeah but they're still really sharp uh, yes, they so yeah so that's um that these are just just regular universal needles do you use some type of cotton no just standard ordinary cotton i mean the, the, there is a difference there is a huge difference in cotton and if you buy like gutterman you notice the difference and it is lovely to work with in fact i did think i don't know if i put it here or not i did think about using this cotton which is a Gutterman one, yeah, which I, I rather you like. Cheap, nasty stuff, well, you can use cheap, nasty stuff, and I've been known to use cheap, nasty stuff. Um, but you do get what you pay for. Oh, yeah, look at this. I love this one because it's variegated. But I wasn't sure really whether it went or not. So I decided not to use it in the end. Um, but I do, I do like Gutterman, I have to say. And they do some really nice seed beads as well. Right, so I need to find something to make my pocket out of. And this is, well, I'm pretty certain that this is one that I just folded. So it was three. Yeah, so I just need to choose a piece of paper. Let's have something bright to go on there. I 
let's say that one and I want to cut that at three inches yes they are in theory but I just I broke I broke them no matter what they were all right so what I've done is I've just cut a piece of my six by six paper at three by six so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fold it up like that to make my pocket and I'm just going to sew around the edge there. Has this one still got a hidden needle storage in there or is that another one? No, this is the one I'm sure. Oh, it's not hidden though, is it really? Yes, I saw that the other day. I like, I'd never ever realised that. It was fascinating. Put You put your needles in here. Yeah. but that's not they're going to come out of there but one of them's got like a little i can't remember who it was but yeah that was cool i didn't know that right and now i'm just going to fold this just so and cut it here so it's a bit hard. how do you keep them in there though Right, so that's going to be, that's going to, oh, I might just do, no, I'm going to, I'm going to cut that frog off because he says happy birthday. I don't want it to say happy birthday. So I'm going to fold that the other way now. Right, so that is going to sit on there. But now I'm just going to sew around them just to give a bit of interest. So I've got my, my pocket which have just folded like that and I'm just going to sew it all in one unit obviously if you're not sewing you just need to draw this just Put a little bead of glue around. Oh, that didn't sound good. Okay, so I've just sewn around, which has made our pocket like that. Now I'm just going to sew around these edges here. So now I'm just going to tie them off. Before next week, I've got some great Easter photos from a f well, actually many years ago, um, and I'm going to put those in here. So I will print those off before next week. And what I've done with the photographs in this book is I have matted them onto some of these pattern papers and then I've just shown uh, sewn around the edge
I'm just going to tie those four all together mainly because I can't be bothered to do them all separately. Okay, so that will fold up like that now. And I'm just going to take some glue. When I'm gluing on sewn areas, I always put my glue actually over the stitches because they're raised up a little bit and I find that just helps it to stick better. So now I've got a little pocket which I'll pop something in at some point and I've got my little pull down bit here which I am going to glue onto there. I've probably got some more Gutterman somewhere because I know, I know, yeah, I know where. It does look a good yellow, yeah. It? Yeah, yeah it does. It's so cool, it. isn't it? Yeah. You don't, you really genuinely don't know it's there until somebody tells you. Your end pulls off, but it's, I don't know where it's for that bit. I'll I might on. have lost something off it. Does that pulls off? I've probably lost the bit that. Well, show us then, while I'm gluing this. That's all that comes off. I bet you there was a bit on there that I've lost. Yeah, you've lost the other bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Lisa, that is an absolutely great question to which I don't know the answer. I've never used mine on... Well, I have used mine on fabric when I've sewn fabric into a book, which I think... Who suggested that earlier? Was it Jane or Sue? Yeah. <laughs> right, so that page is done. So I'm, I'll put some thickers or something on there later when I find them. Um, but I've got my little pocket and that's ready to go into my book. So which page should we do now? You're all the same shape, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, right. Now, this one, uh, what I've done is I've got a shaker, which I'll worry about later. But this has just got a little pocket on, which I actually used a different stitch on. I've used, um, what do you call it? Zigzag stitch. By the way, who was asking? Uh, Sally Ann, wasn't it, about this machine? The one thing, and if somebody can tell me about it, I'd be very grateful if I've got it wrong. But I don't think you can change the stitch size on it. That's just occurred to me. Right, so I'm going to make this pocket. So I'm going to make this pocket and I'm going to cut it at four and a half by four and a half inches. So let's pick some paper. I might use that one actually. Right, and I'm going to cut it at four and a half inches square. And also, I'm going to want another stripe. So, what have I got? Where's my stripy paper? Here it is. So I want another stripe and I'm going to want a sentiment. going to do is I am going to cut a half circle out of here so the top bit there now all I did was 
I grabbed my big circle punch. Half a four and a half deer. Two and a quarter. Marked where the middle point was. And I'm just going to use my circle punch just to punch out half a circle there. Okay. I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue. Line that up. Chop that end off. And I'm going to sew that on there. Now, whilst I'm here, I might just as well sew this so let's find a piece of paper and I found it easier just to roughly cut my mat bigger and then worry about cutting it down properly afterwards Rizwana says hello, hello. hi Rizwana so I'm just going to pop that on there Oh, there's about 20 sewing machines. Wow, do you use them all? I think so, yeah. No. And I'm just going to sew that on too. Get me a little trimmer. And now I'm just going to cut this down so that my mat is the same size all the way around. Well, that's near enough. Need to change the blade in that one. Right, okay, nearly there. Let's tie these. I find it much easier to tie as I go because then when we're sewing things onto other bits, you run much less of a risk of getting everything tangled up, which is what you don't want. I'm going to pop that back through. So 
So I'm working on page three at the moment. Okay, so let me grab that out of my book. And I'm now going to sew that on to there like that. Pop a little bit of glue on, not that I think it's going to help particularly. And I'm going to be really adventurous and I'm going to use the zigzag one, which I'm hopeless at, by the way. I never seem to be able to get this right. My needle always ends up in a strange place. He has a very old singer one. It's lovely, beautiful thing. I think it works. I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah. See, there's nothing at all tidy about this, but I really don't care because I think that just fits with the book. So now I'm going to use my needle again, which I've just had and have promptly lost. Oh, for goodness sake, I had it in my hand a second ago. It isn't in your hand. No. Where is it? Oh, there it is. And I'm going to take these threads and I'm going to put them back to the front. I don't know who it belonged to, that sewing machine. Um, it wasn't my mum's. I know where my mum's is. She's got a beautiful. She was. She had this beautiful sewing machine that's knocking about somewhere. I remember that because she used to make our clothes and all sorts of things when we were kids. There was. I did actually use a sewing machine to make curtains once. I made the curtains in the front room at Dad's. Um. My dad's got a huge bay window. He lives in a very old house and he's got big windows and stuff. And I remember one day my mother and I sitting at opposite ends of the kitchen table making curtains for the front room. It just shows how old they are. I can sew a straight line. That's about it. Okay, right, now, just for a little bit of added interest, what I also did on this page was I sewed all the way around the outside, twice, don't know why, so I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to turn it back to the straight stitch and sew around the outside. Now, when I'm sewing two lines, I make sure that they're not on top of each other because at the end of the day, when we're sewing, we're perforating our paper. And the last thing that we want is for it all to fall apart. And yes, I do speak from experience. So when I, when I um, sew a second line round, I do it at a slightly different um, place so that, you know, it, it's quite obviously two separate lines. <laughs>
obviously whilst I've been sewing some of these ones these little lines that we've sewn previously have got tangled up so I'm just going to try and pull those through I might have sewn through it and might not be able to but if I can I'm going to pull that out That one I've sewn right through. I'll leave that. Right, okay, let's tidy this up. Right, and now, last bit for now, until I find out what I'm going to fussy cut, because I haven't decided really. I'm going to pop some glue onto that sentiment, and I'm going to stick that there. Right, so, that's this page here, and now I need to see what I've done on the other side. So, so on this one I had two Project Life cards that I've cut down oh no I didn't I stuck this together because I thought it looked better oh have I no yeah I want two Project Life cards that I've stuck down so I need to find two of those where are they here okay so there you see we've got a little pocket there Right, what will we put here? Two and a half, isn't it? Half of five. Yeah. So I'm going to cut these down to two and a half. I'm going to take quarter of an inch off each side. On that one so that it stays central. This one's not so important. Just cut that down to two and a half. But what I am going to do now is I'm just going to go around all the rounded corners again. just to get them the same and then I'm going to glue these on here and sew them on so once again I'm going to line it up with those score lines that I had earlier so that they form no functional purpose other than for me to see where I'm sewing and gluing things. Okay, and I'm just going to sew straight down. Has anyone ever made an album purely from Project Life? I've done... Um... I did one in, in a class once, um, but we just, we just, actually, do you fancy going digging for it? I can tell you exactly where it is. In the In the little room, hanging up on the, what's this side? The right hand side of the window. Yeah. There's a little Project Life book there. Oh, I will try and find it. It's got a picture of Rachel on the front. Oh, yeah. 
Right, this isn't going to be straight, I feel. Thank you, dear. Actually, that was straighter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, we did this in class once, but this is just a quick and easy uh, using Project Life cards and one of those little hinged bind ring things. Um, you could absolutely, I'll tell you how else you could do this as well, how else you could bind it. But I just used some little, you know, some little photos and some die cut pieces and stuff just to make a little album with just a few little photos. And these make nice little gifts for people. Um, the other way that you could do it is if you take um, a piece of like a strip like this, fold it in half and then use it to glue two cards together and keep doing that all the way through. Um, you could bind them like that. Okay, so that one's going to open up like like that. Um, but I can't remember what I did on this page, so let's have a look. Oh, the um, shaker. Right, okay, for the shaker, all I did was I had a piece of a Project Life card. Like, I don't know. That one will do. And some acetate, which I'm not even sure I've got up here. Oh, we might be in luck. I'm just going to cut roughly a piece of acetate bigger because we don't want to make life difficult for ourselves. Mm. So I'm just going to cut that piece of acetate larger than my Project Life card. And I'm going to sew round it on three sides but I'm going to leave the big side at the top open because it's easier like that Now I'm going to leave that in my machine for a moment because I'm going to choose one of these little sentiments because that card, that Project Life card that I'm using there is quite plain. So I'm just going to choose one of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip it into that open I don't know how much of this you can see. I'm just slipping that into the open bit of my shaker pocket and I've left the needle down inside the card at this point because I want it to be secure. Now, earlier on, I found some sequins that went quite well. So all I'm going to do now is just get some sequins. What was mentioned at your plate, Ruth? My plate? Oh, I know. I don't know where that is. It's under the carpet. We haven't got a carpet oh. in here. You have to read the comments. Oh. oh, I'm making the right pig's ear with this. I'm not very good with sequins. I love them, but they don't have to go everywhere because this is awkward. But I'm just going to put some of these sequins now inside that shaker pocket. Have you got a separate needle? Paper. No, 
No, because I only have a slow paper. If you you are a, a proper proper sewer, then yeah, I think you'd have you'd have separate needles. But I never do anything but paper, so right, so I've added some sequins into that pocket. I might just put a few, oh, flipping egg. A few more because you can't have too many sequins. I'll try not to put cat hair in and bits of paper and people hair. That's one of mine. Oh, is it dark? Ish. everywhere right so I've got those in ish and now I'm just going to seal it up by sewing the top shut stay in little sequins ah one's coming out Bid for freedom? I don't think so. Right, so I've got a sort of a shaker pocket. It's near enough. So I'll just tie these ends off because the last thing we want is this pocket coming undone. Disaster. Now, if you haven't got a sewing machine and you want to make a shaker pocket, the fuse tool is very good. I've got one of those and I rather like it, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure how else you could you could do it. Some some card maker might be able to tell you, but anyway, now I'm going to trim the acetate off from around the outside. I just find it easier to work with a piece bigger than I need, and then if it moves, it's not the end of the world. Oh, yeah, wash your tape around the outside would be lovely. Oh, yes, I like that idea very much. OK, so there's my little shaker pocket. And I'm going to attach that there. But when I come to deciding what I'm fussy cutting, or I might use punches, I'll put some bits around the outside as well, just to make it a bit more interesting. What time is it? Oh my God, it's nine o'clock. Um, what the size of the um this Project Live card, Nicole? They're usually two by three, I think, aren't they? Are they two by three inches? Mom, 
Four by three. Oh. Okay, right. So we've managed a grand total of two pages in one and a half hours. Sorry. Right, okay. So you get the idea. Uh, this is this might take a bit longer than I anticipated. But I don't want to keep you any longer because I think an hour and a half of me is enough for anybody. Um, so... We can come back next week, next Wednesday. And if we get stuck, we'll just carry on on Thursday to finish it off because I'd like to start the recipe book the week after, if possible. But we'll see how we go. But we might have to do two more classes on this one. So um, if you're around on Friday, it's part two of the Whimsical Wallet over in Crafting Together with All Brands. Other than that... Um, I will see you all next Wednesday. So thank you ever so much for joining me this evening and I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye. Bye.